Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I'd want to share with you all an important message that was sent to Luisa Picarita. Please take a time to share this video with others, as these lessons are unquestionably critical for God's people to hear and understand. We pray that these words will be shared and spread to the ends of the earth to the glory of the Most Holy Trinity. Let us now humbly ask the Most Holy Spirit to lead us in all things, including the discernment of these messages, as He is all-powerful or omnipotent, just as He is consubstantial with God the Father and God the Son, and with a great act of trust and love to the Holy Spirit, that He may give us the grace to discern these messages from heaven. Please join me in saying, Come Holy Spirit, Fill the hearts of your faithful and the hearts of your kingdom with the fire of your love. They will be generated if you send forth your spirit. And you will regenerate the earth's face. O God, who instructed the hearts of the faithful via the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that by the same Holy Spirit, we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations, but most of all to discern these messages. That we may always differentiate the truth from deception, and always glorify you through all of our works and actions. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Mystics have used numerous words to denote a coming global event that will shake and reveal the consciences of a certain age. Some refer to it as a warning, while others refer to it as a mini-judgment, great shaking, day of light, purification, rebirth, blessing, and so on. The sixth seal, described in the sixth chapter of the book of Revelation may depict this global event, which is not the last judgment but some type of intermediate shaking of the world, there was a big earthquake, and the sun turned black as sackcloth, the full moon turned blood red, and the stars of the sky fell to the ground. Revelation chapter 6 verse 15 to 17 Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful, and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? Our Lord appears to point to such an event, or set of events, that will throw the world into a state of mortification, in many messages to servant of God Luisa Picarita. I saw the entire church, the wars that the religious must undergo and get from others, and warfare amongst societies. There appeared to be a general rebellion. It also did appear that the Holy Father would use extremely few religious persons, both to put the church, priests, and others back into line, and to help the society in this condition of chaos. While I was witnessing this, Blessed Jesus asked me, Do you believe the church's triumph is far? And I, yes indeed, who can put order in so many things that are messed up? And he, on the contrary, I tell you that it is near. It takes a clash, but a strong one, and therefore I will permit everything together, among religious and secular, so as to shorten the time. And in the midst of this clash, all of big chaos, there will be a good and orderly clash, but in such a state of mortification, that men will see themselves as lost. However, I will give them so much grace and light that they may recognize what is evil and embrace the truth. Several years later, Jesus warns that man has become so hard that even even war can shake him, man is starting to grow worse and worse. He's gathered so much pus within himself that not even the war has been able to get it out. War did not weaken man, on the contrary, it strengthened him. The revolution will infuriate him, 
hardship will fill him with despair and drive him to crime. All of this will work to release all of the rot that he contains, and then my goodness will hit man directly from heaven, rather than indirectly via creatures. These chastisements will be like helpful dew from heaven, killing man's ego, and he, touched by my hand, will recognize himself, will wake up from the sleep of sin, and will recognize his Creator. Therefore, daughter, pray that everything may be for the good of man. The main point to consider here is that the Lord knows how to take the wickedness and evil, that is exhausting itself in our times, and use even it for our salvation, sanctification, and His greater glory. 1 Tim chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, for who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. According to seers all across the world, we have now entered the period of tremendous tribulation, our Gethsemane, the hour of the Church's passion. For the faithful, this is not cause for fear, but rather anticipation that Jesus is close, active, and triumphant over evil and will do so via escalating natural and spiritual events. The coming warning, like the angels sent to strengthen Jesus on the Mount of Olives, will likewise strengthen the Church for her passion, infuse her with the graces of the Kingdom of the Divine Will, and eventually lead her to the Church's resurrection. Luke chapter 21 verse 28, Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil, may God rebuke him we humbly pray, and to thou O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God. Thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who wandered through the world for the ruin of souls, Amen. O glorious Prince Saint Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Hosts, Guardian of souls, when creature of rebel spirits, servant in the house of the Divine King and our admirable conductor. You who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil who turn to you with confidence and enable us by your gracious protection, to serve God more and more faithfully every day. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to their protection, implored thy help, or sought the intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother, to thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. To you, O blessed Joseph, do we come in our afflictions, and having employed the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also. Through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and through the paternal love with which you embrace the child Jesus. We humbly beg you graciously, to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by His blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ, O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O our most mighty Protector, be kind to us, and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. As once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity, shield, too, each one of us by your constant protection, so that, supported by your example and your aid, we may be able to live piously to die in holiness, and to obtain eternal happiness in heaven, Amen. Let us also recite the act of contrition together, 
that outlawed by his most precious blood and sacrifice on Calvary. May cleanse of all our iniquity and sin, and grant us the grace to feel truly saddened and remorseful, for all the transgressions and sins that we have committed intentionally and unintentionally. That he may also give us the grace to do all the necessary penances, and never commit these grievous sins any more. O oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of digest punishments, but most of all because they offend thee, my God who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for watching and may God pour down an abundance of graces and blessings upon all of us. Till next time. Stay blessed and keep praying.